Hi people <clears throat> and greetings from the sunny Ireland. Um, I've been thinking for a while uh, how to visualize RF signals inside the FPGA. So if you're a subscriber for of this channel, probably you know that I already think I'm I, I'm tinkering with the um, radio frequencies and radios um, in in digital domain. So on the FPGA, so. It's kind of hard to see what is going on inside the FPGA. The only tools you have are the uh, former chip scope. I'm not sure how it's called right now, which there is an equivalent in the Altera land, which is just like a logic analyzer that you you put aside your your design inside the FPGA and you can look at some signals. But by looking to some numbers, it's not going to tell you the a lot about your signals so the best way to visualize those signals is in the digital domain in the digital is in the frequency domain sorry i repeat this is in the frequency domain so it's not that easy uh, because you can't just insert something very very simple there to see them uh, another choice you have is to feed those uh, signals uh, outside of the chip and uh, go to a duck which again not many people they have now most of the boards most of the development boards they do have um, a VGA output so I was thinking to build something like a block or a suite of blocks um, and sample the signals most of my signals they travel on the axi stream bus so to sample signals on the axi stream bus apply an FFT um, engine extract the magnitude and eventually convert the magnitude in from linear to in db and display them straight on the screen now i have this idea from an old video that uh, i've seen on youtube uh, where somebody was uh, jerry ellsworth actually was this somebody she was building a radio and she was trying to to display the signal in real time so i said let's let's give it a go why not so I'll show you uh, the block diagram um, right away. Right, block diagram. What you see here on the left hand side, it's a signal generator. So I had to add a signal generator in order to test my design. So this is just a helper, it's not part of the actual design. Uh, the key component here is the FFT, which is coming from the tools. Everything actually comes from the tools except the VGA timing generator, which I had to write myself. So I choose 1024 bins, uh, keeping in mind that my monitor is 1024 pixels across, not my monitor, the resolution that I'm targeting. Um, so the FFT uh, spits out 1024, a packet of 1024 samples. Uh, and in those outputs, it contains two types of information, the magnitude and the phase. Now, I am i wasn't interested in the phase, it's just the magnitude, because this is what I want to display. This is what the a, a, a spectrum analyzer actually displays. So in order to extract the ma magnitude, the formula is here. I, uh, I square the, the I component, I square the quadrature component, add them together, and then extract the square root. Uh, the square root was extracted with the Cordic uh, core, which again is available in the in the tools. This is actually a very neat uh, method of extracting the square root, and the Cordic is a very versatile core. It can do many many interesting things. Anyway, uh, so the data is actually presented here. So it will be a packet of 1,024 values, which they contain the magnitude. So one small challenge is that uh, your sampling clock here for the, your signal uh, obviously is going to be different from the from the VGA pixel clock. So there is a FIFO here which is crossing uh, from one clock domain to another. I didn't represent it here on the screen just to to keep it simple. Uh, another thing I, which I didn't represent on the screen is that um, in order to have the the minimum motion artifacts on the screen because this is a move <laughs> you will see it immediately is moving on the screen uh, what i did i just calculated a, a block of fft for every frame that is going to display so this this timing generator actually has an output signal which is the at the end of the one frame and is telling this make me another packet so 
uh, those blocks of calculated blocks to the FFT, they are somehow requested by the by the VGA core. Anyway, uh, let's go straight to the demo. Um, one thing which were to be mentioned, uh, the data here is actually linear, it's not in logarithmic logarithmic uh, scale. So it's kind of difficult to display when uh, this is like a 16-bit value and I have only limited um, um, span on the vertical to display. But the plan is actually to insert here a core um, to transform from linear to logarithm, which I kind of did already, but I didn't have the chance to, to test it. So uh, straight to the demo. So what you see here, it's everything which is interesting here is happening in the first uh, 256 uh, pixels on the, on the vertical. So this is the interesting part. And what you see here is actually a frequency which is just getting generated by the NCO from zero from DC to 100 megs, and it's sweeping. So the generator is sweeping this frequency, and this is the peak of that frequency. Now this quantity, this this magnitude, is actually in li linear. So I have about um, I don't know 10 bits. I, I, I had to truncate the output because all my output is actually about 16 bits and in order to display 60, a 16 bit value on the 256 um, uh, pixels on the vertical uh, I had to truncate the signal so I had to be a little bit creative there but this problem will go away when uh, this is going to be displayed in DB um, and why is that? When we in DB, you can, we can display very, very small value next to very, very large values because the, the scale is logarithmic. Now, um, you're wondering why, why did I left all this space uh, free here? Uh, the reason is that I want, to, I want to add here a cascade view, like you see in most of the, the digital receivers. So I might reuse this um, block for, um, in a digital receiver.